Nathan carefully stalked his way down the unfamiliar passage. He didn't know exactly where he was, but he was almost sure it was a crew-only area. In fact, ever since he had boarded, there seemed to suddenly be more and more crew-only areas. Whatever. It didn't change the fact that he wished to remain unobserved. The hospital bed he had slept on had been adequate, especially after the horror of the previous day, but it lacked privacy, and the stairs he kept getting from across the room were starting to bother him. What Nathan really wanted was an empty space where he could stretch and do a little exercise without terrifying the aliens. So he had snuck out before breakfast, checking each door where he passed, hoping to find a cargo hold that wasn't totally full. He didn't find one, but Nathan's eyes lit up with joy at what he did find. Light duties. What a joke. Reem had checked himself out of the medical bay as soon as he could. It's not like the dark marks on his face were going to heal any faster there, and he was only too happy to be away from the pink one. Yesterday's ordeal had only left him with a some bruising and a deeply torn ego. Thankfully the Zillion must have been in a hurry or he might have ended up with a torn up thorax as well. Light duty seems like a blessing at first. No one was questioning how the prisoner overpowered him and escaped. Then the news had come that the pink one was missing and now he was sweeping the decks with the other crew. Yeah, more like wandering his assigned section hoping to not get roped into something else more strenuous. None of the passengers would have wandered this far down amongst the storage holds anyway. Bored, Reem quickly came to a decision. Now was the perfect time to slink off into his secret place for a short nap. No one would come looking for him while they were busy on their wild chase. Nathan had just finished the last of his vigorous stretching and took a moment to gaze adoringly at what had drawn him to this particular room. Most of the front of the room held pipes and deactivated machinery, but the back held a half full reservoir of freshest water that screened one thing to his mind, swimming pool. Curiously, Nathan had found that the wider galaxy didn't really have a concept of recreational swimming, and most species seemed to have an aversion to open bodies of water. Probably something to do with the fact that most species look like oversized stick insects to his eyes. He quickly stripped off his now sweaty football shorts and loose singlet, the only items of clothing he bothered to wear these days, and took a running dive towards the pool. Mid-dive he caught a flash of movement in his peripheral vision and realised he was not alone. Reem was cursing his luck when he found his bolt hole already occupied. Cautiously he edged into the room for a better look and discovered to his dismay that it was the pink one. The strange little alien was doing some sort of writhing with his body, perhaps it was in pain. His actions didn't match any of the information about it that he had heard so far. He would call for assistance, the captain would know how to deal with this. Suddenly the pink one stopped writhing and removed his garments. Reem was able to confirm another rumour about the alien, as his newly revealed undeveloped leg polyp indicated that it was still in his primary growing phase, making it his species equivalent of a late stage juvenile. It then threw itself with suicidal abandon into the backup drinking water tank. Reem panicked. None of the species that could swim were nearby. He would have to jump in and save it, but he didn't have a swim bladder. He would just drown too. The pink one briefly surfaced and started splashing around frantically. Captain Sal would kill him if he just let it drown. There was no other choice. Scrunching his eyes in fear, Reem jumped in. The calm water was cool and soothing compared to Nathan's earlier exertions. He decided to do a lap before he greeted his observer. As he turned around and pushed off the far side, he saw that an alien had joined him in the water. The way it thrashed seemed very excessive to Nathan. No wonder these guys rarely swam. As he got closer, it became obvious that the alien was tiring fast and needed some assistance. Reaching out, the alien latched onto his arm with maniac strength, dragging them together in a grappling embrace. Despite the continued thrashing and very uncomfortable chitinous protrusions digging into his flesh, Nathan managed to get them to shore and out of the water. At some point, the poor thing had soiled itself. As they caught their breath, he wondered why it didn't just stand up if it was in trouble. The water was only about shoulder deep in himself. Sal rubbed his eyes as the footsteps of the junior maintenance engineer faded down the corridor from his quarters. To his surprise, 
It turned out that the pink one was also attracted to open water, at least if the crew member's report was to be believed. Thankfully, Reem had bravely dived in and saved it, even though his species shared the common sense fear of drowning. Sal would have to arrange all liquid storage tanks to be behind locked doors for the remainder of the voyage. It was becoming increasingly clear that this leg of his run wasn't going to be profitable because of the pink one. Passenger compartment repairs, the extra rations the human ate, and now he would have to replace the backup drinking water supply after it panic excreted in it. 